Hello and welcome to this year's CCCM Global Retreat. My name is Chris Hoffman. I'm with the Norwegian Refugee Council as their Global Project Manager for Smart Rapid Response Mechanisms, which in truth really just centers around the fact of uh, having to look at how we do our responses and look at different digital solutions that can be applied. But one of the things that is the crux to everything that we do and what I believe and I think what we believe as a humanitarian community that's important is connectivity. Providing digital solutions in humanitarian settings is solely based on our ability to connect. Connect via phones, connect via data tools and the internet, and being able to connect uh, with our communities and the systems that we would like to operate uh, over a wide array of opportunities, either 4G networks, 3G networks, uh, Wi-Fi, hotspots, fiber optic, satellite, VSAT, etc. And one of the questions that we've started to ask ourselves, and one of the questions that have not yet been answered yet is, is connectivity a right? Do people in need have a right to access connectivity? We know that the future, right, not only because of COVID, but as we look towards the future, of our engagement in communities is very much so based in the digital realm. And with social distancing that's come from uh, COVID-19 and then the pandemic, we also know that we have to be able to engage quite quickly and pivot quite quickly to be able to speak to those that are in need, be able to provide our services to those that are in need via digital means. Connectivity and the ability to connect to the internet or the ability to connect digitally in a number of different environments empowers communities to grow, empowers them to be able to have a voice to be able to express their needs, to be able to express their concerns, and to be able to show to us the things that they think that they would like to have to be able to reach towards durable solutions in a faster way, uh, in being able to return home, uh, being able to be protected, feel protected, and be able to communicate their, their protection concerns um, using digital means. We know that it's important that connectivity is where we are and that people have access to it. One of the biggest questions that we're facing today is how to do it. We've had a number of different models that have been presented, whether models around fully subsidized um, by providing SIM cards and providing data um, to, to certain individuals and communities, Wi-Fi hotspots and internet cafes and allowing people to come and access the internet in a closed environment. Um, but what we're proposing today is to want to bring forward the discussion around new and innovative business models that can be applied in humanitarian settings. One of those models is what I want to present right now, which is what we call the airport model. All of us in the humanitarian community have traveled. We travel through airports throughout the world, some with really good connectivity and some with very bad connectivity. But one of the things that kind of stands true to all of them is that you access a front page when you enter the, the airport, uh, their airport Wi-Fi system. As you enter that front page, sometimes you have to watch a 15 second video on where to go to uh, access food. You might have to take a survey on the services that they provided. But in essence, you have to give something to get something back, which is that free Wi-Fi that you'd like to have. This airport model that we're proposing is similar to that, but facilitated by the NGOs and the United Nations agencies that are operating in these camp settings or camp like settings and then being able to provide a service back, which is uh, being able to provide the Wi-Fi access. So, for example, uh, we would offer uh, Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the, the camp, using a camp as, as, as a defined area. It's the easiest kind of example to use. And as we set up these Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the camp, as people go to those Wi-Fi hotspots and access the internet, we would ask them maybe a few questions through a survey, maybe show them a video on uh, an information video on GBV, um, maybe create some behavior change by uh, helping them to understand the effects of washing their hands and, and, and how it mitigates COVID-19 uh, propagation. Anything like that. And if we think about it in this way, any agency could do that. So WFP, for example, could have food messaging or food-related messaging. Um, UNHCR might have protection-related messaging. Uh, the government might actually have messaging around safety uh, in the camps, where to find police stations, etc. And so what would have to happen is a number of agencies and NGOs uh, and potentially the government would buy data bundles 
And they would buy these data bundles and then they would buy a number of hits. So for example, Save the Children would come and want to buy 10,000 hits of a one minute video and that amount of data and the hours associated with that. So in general, that would be 10,000 hours of, of data up to a certain kind of limit. So let's say, you know, whatever that is, one terabyte of data. And they pay into this system and then NRC ourselves, we would do the same for legal services. And so we would all be working in an ecosystem of, of uh, seeking information uh, from the beneficiaries, either through a survey or something else, maybe just the amount of hits that we would have on a certain video. And then we would be given the opportunity to access information, which is free at one hour of internet by, by taking the survey. And then every subsequent survey or every subsequent hour, you would have to take another, another survey or something like that. And this in general, uh, this general idea, we presented at NetHope uh, about two weeks ago, and th there's been a lot of feedback uh, on it. But what we're finding is, and UNHCR is, 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 is taking a, a role within this as well. What we're finding is, is that the policy is not there. Do we guard and fence it? Do we allow them to, would, would we just open up the internet for that one hour? They can access anything they want. Would we need to guard and fence it? Would we need to uh, direct the different sites that they're able to access? Would we actually have our own interface that they would have to access directly just to be supplied with information relevant to the camp uh, or, or where they are? So a lot of these questions haven't been answered, and we've not, as a community, really come up with uh, the, the finite, this is what we can and can't do, this is what we should and shouldn't do uh, kind of guidance. And so we're really bringing this together um, here today with you, and as we had at NetHope uh, two weeks ago, and as we will for the next year. So for 2021, NRC will be uh, putting together what they call the Connectivity Collective, uh, which is a group of a number of different uh, industry uh, powerhouses that are in the connectivity space, uh, some of the coalitions that are out there, such as uh, hopefully GSMA and others, uh, and, and you. And so we reach out to you to come and join this connectivity collective uh, to see that we can bring forward the discussion uh, around connectivity as a potential right uh, and as access to connectivity as a potential right, and then how we're going to be able to design the business cases to do that. So you can always visit us at uh, connectivitycollective at nrc.no and come and talk to us there. Uh, and uh, I wish you all a, a great rest of your time at the CCCM Global Cluster Meeting. And uh, say hello to all my friends that are there, and, and, and I hope that you're, you're well and safe. And um, stay well and be well. Thanks.